take a moment. I want you to enter a place of Zen. You're sitting in a boat on a glass clear lake. You hear birds chirping. An eagle flies over you in the sky. A gentle breeze kisses your face and you think, this is my happy place. I couldn't ask for anything better. I'm just a little hungry. You realize you're surrounded by fish. All you have to do is drop that bait into the water. And if you do everything right, you'll have a fish in the boat. Doesn't it feel amazing? Well, guess what? You're actually in the real estate space and you are surrounded by fish and they want to be caught. You couldn't ask for a better scenario. And I'm here to tell you just how you can do it. All right, I've got three surprising metaphors about your real estate business that tie in very closely to something everyone can understand, catching fish. Human beings have been catching fish for about as long as we've been alive and we've been near a place where fish live. The things that work at catching fish will also help you making sales. The first example I wanna give you is fish catching versus fish cleaning. You can take any business and divide it into two columns, catching fish and cleaning fish. We call these sales and operations. Catching fish is skill-based and it will always be the most important part of your business. This is where all the revenue comes from. You got to be able to get fish to bite that hook and get them in the boat. Cleaning fish is what you do after you've made a sale, also called operations. This will typically be the first stuff that you hire out because it is not as important in your business as catching fish. Now, this does not mean that operations are not important, but here's the way I look at it. If you can catch fish, but you can't clean them, you still have a business. You've still got the fish. You just have to take time to do it yourself. But if you can clean fish, but you can't catch them, you literally don't have a business. And therefore, catching fish, getting sales, getting customers to want to work with you and putting clients in contract will always be the most important skill that you can build as a real estate agent. Now, this is true of investors also. Getting the deal is more important than managing the deal. We all understand that. Being great at doing your own handyman work can save you money but it only applies if you've actually got the property under contract at a good price in the first place. So we always focus as investors on catching fish. Well, the same thing is true for you as an agent. As someone who runs a team, I put the majority of my time towards getting fish in the boat, and then I let the agents help with the process of cleaning them. This is a way that they can get used to fishing while at the same time we don't all starve because there's no leads coming in. Now that doesn't mean that your agents will never help you to catch fish. They can always support you in that endeavor. In fact, I highly encourage our agents to lead generate. We even make them do that. We just don't expect them to carry the majority of the burden of sales as new agents who are still trying to learn the ropes. I'd rather get the fish on the hook, hand them the fishing pole and let them reel it in and let them learn that way. When it comes to lead generation, Making calls, having conversations, attending meetups, this is all just fishermen throwing out their lure into the water. It's making casts. The number of contacts you make is the number of casts that you've made. And we can all agree that you don't catch a fish if you have your lure in the boat. It has to be in the water where the fish are. This is why we highly encourage people to make a lot of phone calls, make a lot of contacts, and have a lot of conversations. You have to put your lure out there. Now, the reason we don't is because of rejection. We don't want to know that nobody wants our lure. Well, here's my advice for that. Accept that that's going to be the case. They're not going to want your lure. You're actually going to have to learn how to put something else on the hook that fish want to bite. You got to figure out the right things to say and the right value to bring. And that only happens when you try and try and try and learn from trial and error what makes people want to work with you and what turns people away. But no one ever caught a fish because they were afraid to cast because they thought that their lure was going to be rejected. Which brings us to another good point. Don't think it's you being rejected. It's the bait you put on the hook that's being rejected. You can always change the bait. You can't always change yourself. If you internalize that rejection and say, they didn't want to work with me, you're never going to keep working at this. If you look at it and say, they didn't want to work with the presentation that I gave, they didn't want to work with the value that I provided, you're actually empowered to give a better presentation and provide more value than you did on the first try. You'll also pay attention to what's working for other fishermen and fisherwomen to catch their fish. One of the common questions I would ask when an agent would get a new listing is, how did you find that client? Oh, I was at the grocery store and I started a conversation with them. Oh, they're a family friend. Oh, I worked with a friend of theirs and met them when they came on the moving day. And I learned you meet fish on moving day. You meet fish at the grocery store. You meet fish at holidays through friends and family or 4th of July parties. And so I started attending those things 
with my fishing pole. Now on the same fish catching and fish cleaning tip, the last thing I wanna say is consider how much more slowly you make progress if you catch your own fish. Then you gotta clean it yourself before you can get back out there and catch the next one. This is why your first hire should be someone to help you clean fish so you can keep your lure in the water. Hiring somebody to handle all of your contract stuff like a transaction coordinator is an easy first move. Then hiring an administrative assistant to help set you up finding the bait that you're going to use, reading the fishing reports, and keeping your boat gassed up. They can do all of this by making comparative market analysis for you, helping manage your database, and staying in touch with past clients to see if there's any help that you can give them or their friends and family. Remember, the goal is to keep your bait in the water as much as possible, and so you hire out the administrative stuff that slows you down and keeps you from doing it. In the second analogy, I want to highlight that there's two kinds of work. There's skill work, and there's busy work. Busy work is something anyone can do. And it does not mean it's not important. It just means it's more easily delegated. Putting the worm on a hook, anyone can do that. Putting gas in the boat, paying the boat's registration fees, or making sure that all of your rods are lined up and ready to go, that's busy work. That stuff that can be put on a checklist and any employee, even the low level ones that make the least amount of money can help you with that. But skill work is more valuable. That's something only a special group of people can do because they have the skill to do it. While anyone can bait a hook, not anyone can set a hook when you're trying to catch the fish. Having the skill to get the client to sign the listing agreement, get them to sign the buyer rep agreement, get the other agent to accept your offer, get your clients to write the competitive offer that they need to, or negotiate a higher price on that listing is hard to develop and incredibly valuable. As the person building a real estate company, you need to focus on skill work and delegate out busy work. A big mistake people make is they try to delegate the skill work. They take their buyer's agents or their showing assistants and say, you talk to the client, you convince them to write a higher offer. It doesn't work. You want your top people and in the beginning, that's you having the conversations and you only want to delegate stuff that is busy work, which means anyone can do it. There's fewer consequences if you mess up busy work. So as a rock star agent, these are the first things that you want to delegate. And my third analogy has to do with the position on your team that you are going to man. Do you want to be the captain, the fisherman, or the fishmonger? When deciding what to leverage, start by understanding you and your team's strong suits. If you want to scale your business, you can't be the captain, the fisherman, and the fishmonger, or you'll lose out on each aspect of this business. The organization mindset looks at that mess, recognizes the opportunities it presents, then cleans up the rest. It focuses on efficiency. You know what your gifts are. You know what you're good at. They're usually the parts of the business you like the most. If you're someone who loves talking to clients and loves walking them through difficult decisions, you probably hate paperwork, organization, and follow-up. That means those are things should be delegated. If you're somebody who loves timelines, loves getting every single thing right in a contract, eliminating mistakes, you usually don't like talking to people as much in conversations that are much more fluid and less static. Meaning you might want to play that role in the business or oversee that part and leverage out the parts of customer service or human interaction that you don't enjoy. Maybe you love listings and you're great at taking them, but buyers drain you. Or maybe vice versa. You love buyers, but listings are intimidating to you. It is okay to have an element in your business, a role that you play in this fishing industry that you like. Drill down on that. Focus on that. Own that and be a rock star at it. And let other people that are in your company do the things that they're good at. All right. I hope these three metaphors help you when you're growing your own business. Remember, Earning money, creating revenue, getting deals, getting clients, whatever it is, is just another way of catching fish. But this pays a lot more and allows you to help more people. You also smell a whole lot better at the end of the day. If this sounds good and you want to get my book, head over to biggerpockets.com slash scale where you can pick it up. You also can use the promo code David, because that's my name, and get 10% off your order using the code. Also, if you get all three of my books, Sold, Skill, and Scale, you can get a free month membership at my Wealth Building Mastermind, an incredible deal. So don't waste your time. Go pick up that trio before the deal passes.